Hello and welcome to this week's episode. I hope your week has gone well and you're looking forward to a relaxing yet productive weekend. Now this week's podcast touches on the subject and habits of using filler words in your speech. Do you struggle with this? Do you get annoyed with them? Well, if you do, listen on to find out more. Section 1 Are you filling your conversations with fluff? The joy of being a voiceover artist is that words are put into my mouth. I have the privilege to sound fluent and intelligent on a wide range of subject matter with very little effort. I'm not troubled by suddenly being asked to comment on a matter I may know little about, and I can pass myself off as an educated thought leader or even an expert. And certainly my voiceover recordings are not troubled by those annoying little filler words like, uh, um, so, ah, uh, you know what I mean. However, in my everyday speech, without the benefit of a pre-prepared script, I often have been guilty of using these tiny little filler words and sounds. Have you noticed these types of words in your speech? How aware are you of the frequency you rely on them during your conversations? Now, over the next two sections, we'll find out why we use these filler words and how we can wean ourselves out of the habit. In the meantime, try and make a note of the type and frequency of these filler words in your next conversation. Just be mindful of them. Section 2 Why do you err all the time? Essentially, there are two reasons why your speech is stuffed with filler words. The first is particularly pertinent if English is your second language. We use filler words to give our brains some processing time to work out what we want to say and how we need to say it. If, on top of that, you're translating from your native language to English, this adds yet another layer of processing complexity. To give ourselves a breather, we'll use a filler word or two to allow our brain to catch up. The second reason is that you've just developed a really bad habit of using them, and it's now become a fixed feature of your speech. You may also find it to be true that if you're feeling particularly tired or fatigued, your use of these filler words becomes more frequent. The circumstances around why the habit has developed will probably vary from speaker to speaker. In some instances, it is due to some sort of fashion in speech that can exacerbate the use of a specific filler word. The use of so at the beginning of sentences came to prominence with the rise of Californian speech, heard on shows like The Kardashians. If you're constantly confronted with other speakers using these filler words, it's unsurprising that you suddenly and perhaps unconsciously start using them in your own sentences. There is also another use of filler words that's worth mentioning. That is when they're used as a placeholder to indicate that you haven't actually finished speaking. People will use fillers to make sure that they're not going to be interrupted, so it acts as a social cue that you intend to continue talking. So now you know why you may be using these words. In the next section, we'll have a look at how we can start reducing their appearance in your British English conversations. Section 3 Cutting out those filler words to make your conversations more engaging. At the end of the day, I doubt you'll be able to totally remove these words or sounds from all of your conversations. However, you can reduce their frequency so they don't become a distraction to your main talking points and detract from your perceived fluency. How to do this? First, you need to become aware of the extent that you're using these words. You can do this either by listening and critiquing yourself or roping the help of a friend or colleague. If you prefer to go down the solo route, I would either video yourself or record the audio only. 
There's an app apparently called Speako, which records your speech and then generates a transcript highlighting where you used filler words. Talk about a subject for a couple of minutes as though you were in conversation with a friend. You could use one of my speaking challenges as a prompt. Try not to prep too much and be as spontaneous as possible. Then have a listen back and count the number of fillers you used. Is there a particular word you're relying on? Do you use it at particular times? Maybe at the beginning of sentences or linking from one thought to another? Or do you end your sentences with a particular phrase? As you listen back, mark each filler word with a physical action such as a clap. So if you're asking a friend to assist you, get them to also use a physical sign when they hear a filler word. They could raise their hand or clap or perhaps slap the table each time. These exercises will help you monitor when you use these words, spot the type and frequency and hopefully ultimately break them. This way you can consciously reduce using filler words. But how to stop using them? The simplest way to reduce the amount of filler in your speech is to slow down. Slowing down will allow your brain to reduce its processing load. It will give you a moment to allow your brain to catch up and work out what you want to say. Pauses also allow you to collect your thoughts and formulate what you want to say. Short pauses of silence can serve two purposes. They will help you begin powerfully and it will help you avoid using a filler word. When you're transitioning from one idea to another, take another pause. Think about what you want to say and say it. Don't make these pauses very heavy, but a second or two pause will help you reduce the fillers. Don't begin speaking until you're ready. Remember, pause, think, speak. Now, I wouldn't set the goal of eliminating these words completely, as using them keeps your speech real and natural. No native speaker ever speaks so fluently with complete knowledge of every topic and has the perfect word to hand every time that filler words never cross their lips. The aim, really, is to reach a place where filler words don't distract from your ideas and the message in your speech. It can be a slow process to get rid of this speech habit, so don't expect miracles overnight. Can I just take a moment to break in here? You can get access to quizzes and members-only posts when you become a member of the British Accent Bundle at learningbritishaccent.com. And of course, you also get access to both the British Accent Training Courses. That's the RP British Accent Pronunciation Course and the Ultimate RP British Accent Learning Resource. You can get all of this for under £7 per month. So if you select the yearly membership option at only £79, you can get immediate access to all these resources. So for less than £7 per month, you can make so much improvement to your speaking voice and gain so much confidence in your fluency and conversation skills. So why not gift yourself this opportunity? Section 4 One hour learning. I love finding out how other people approach learning. It doesn't matter what they're learning in particular, rather how they go about the process and whether their systems could work for me and my British accent learners. Recently, I watched a short video by Ramit Sethi about how he now approaches learning anything new. He calls his process the one hour learning rule. So in the past, he found that he was spending too much time worrying about how long it was going to take him to learn a new skill. Would he ever be any good? What sort of equipment would he need? Etc, etc. He would get so caught up in his head that it would prevent him from taking action and actually start learning. He was putting so much pressure on himself, his thoughts racing ahead, and he would get overwhelmed. Now, though... He's implemented his one-hour learning rule. This means if he's contemplating learning a new skill, he will allow himself a single hour to spend learning this new skill. So you could either spend that hour hiring someone to coach you, 
taking a class or taking an online course. The key is that one hour is long enough to learn whether you enjoy it enough to take the learning further. And an hour is enough time to learn something of significance. If you don't like it, what have you lost? An hour of your time and perhaps the cost of a course or a tutor. This approach helps get yourself out of your head and actually doing something. So do you think you could risk an hour of your time and money to start your British accent journey this weekend? I tell you what, I'll give you a 20% discount to lower the stakes even more. Just use the code THANKYOU20, I'll put it in the show notes, when you sign up to the British Accent Bundle. So I hope you make a great deal of progress this weekend on your learning British accent journey. See you again next week. Bye for now.